Okay. Anyway, to back to tonight, James 1.22. <laughs> Uh, the thought for tonight's message is, is a million ways to die, but only one way to live, obviously. Yes. And a little fun in this. Uh, James wrote this, uh, this, this, this letter, obviously. And if, if you don't know, this is one of the early works of the New Testament. I know it's not in chronological order, but uh, it is one of the early works uh, written by James, which is who? Anybody know who James was that wrote this? Jesus' half-brother. Jesus' half-brother. Half half he accepted, uh, and, 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 and this is that family. You can always have a wonderful deal with family on this because... Guess when James came to Christ? After he died. Right? After Jesus' resurrection, right? Mm -hmm. So there you go. Jesus said, I am. And James said, I don't think so, right? I right. knew you, right? Mm -hmm. I, was your, I was your brother. So uh, very late in life to accept Jesus Christ. Uh, and as a note, uh, that he did not accept him until, again until after his resurrection. And, and late in life to, to accept Christ, yet early in life to see his brother again. Because do you know what happened to James in 62 A.D.? He was stoned to death. Oh, he's right? stoned. stoned. Okay. Uh, again, by the good old Pharisees. The good news, James accepted salvation, which, which secured one sincere fact for him and for all of us, is that there is a million ways to die, but there is only one way to live. And this morning, ladies and gentlemen, if I could, or this evening, if I could get nothing else across to you from this morning, the fact of the matter is, God, Jesus is not negotiating that point. Right. We may think he is, but he's not. It's a non-negotiable point. It's a yes or no decision. It's a yes or no answer. Amen. It's just a fact Amen. of life. So if I'm allowed this evening, I'm going to piggyback a little bit from this morning's closing comments uh, that in Christ within reality that there's but one way to live. John 14, 6, which clarified that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. Amen. No, 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 and no one, no one, absolutely no one comes to, to Christ without him. And, and this is what James realizes. James' entire letter, uh, uh, written as I said early, early in the in the works of the New Testament, James very um, was very secure and a strong belief that that we should be more than just hearers of the word, but actual doers. Now, not going down this road tonight, but a lot of people pull to James when they want to talk about works. Amen. And I keep saying amen because that just means to concur. But what I'm saying factually is a lot of people hold to the fact that I can work. I'm, I work my way to heaven, right? We do works for God because we love him and we want to witness him. But we don't get there because of what we do. Does that make sense? Right. Amen. It's, we get there because of who he is. That's, that's the purpose of salvation, that we take that, that free gift of life freely. But in any case, uh, James was very strong belief about we should be hearers, not just hearers of the word, but actual doers, very much as we discussed this morning in John chapter 15, in which Christ instructs us to abide, to live in him, as to represent the healthy spiritual witness of him. And he also tells us to do that because without him, we can't do it. We, we, we just can't. I'm just, I'm sorry, we can't do it. So in James' very direct and abrupt approach, I invite you to join me with uh, the reading of God's word in James chapter 1, tonight, verse 21. Uh, now put your heart in on as James wastes no words to the direction of our opportunity to serve Christ. And yes, I agree, James 21 is a, a weird spot to start, but I had to start someplace. And in that it says, Therefore, lay aside all filthiness and overflow of the wickedness, and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. Amen. Beautiful Amen. statement. Yes. 22, But be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man that he was. Father God, we come to you this evening thanking you again for the time of fellowship, of laughter. Uh, God, we thank you again for just the opportunity uh, of the church that you just keep blessing us with new members and, and <coughs> salvations. And uh, we thank you for that, Father God. We're humbled. Uh, that you would allow us that capacity. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 So this evening I want you to think about the concept of one way to live and a million ways to die. Or a million ways to die and only one way to live. I don't know either way you want to think about it. But I mean when you think about it, is that not the truth? I'm going to put this down before I throw that at somebody. But there are many ways to die on this earth, is there not? I mean, according to those who keep up with such uh, statistics, that the causes of this can be grouped into three categories, and I bring these from the Internet, so I know it has to be true. It has to be. There's communicable, non-communicable, and injuries. Those are the three types that cause death in our lives, right? Now, you may say, what's communicable? And that's a lot of words for me to say, communicable. 
right? Those are diseases or infections and parasitic diseases as well as maternal, parental, parental and nutritional conditions. Those are one way that you die. Non-communicable. Those are diseases that are considered chronic diseases that are, which are uh, most common cause of death globally, global, uh, worldwide. And finally, there are those who die as a result of intended or accidental injuries. I don't know what intended injuries would be. That sounds painful, but accidental injuries. And in 2021, the top causes of death were cardiovascular and respiratory diseases, heart attacks and can't breathe, right? Technically. Now, I noticed that they left off one key category, which I thought would be on the top 10, which was stupidity. <laughs> so I had to ask, what was the top 10 dumbest ways that you can die? And I just happened to have it. <laughs> <clears throat> and I won't read all the details, but if you love these, these are pretty funny, actually. And some of the titles will just tell you that. But first of all, protesting motorcycle helmet regulations. And yes, and I won't read the whole thing, but there was a man in New York uh, when the, the, the motorcycle helmet law came out in 2011. He was protesting when he suddenly slammed into his brakes and flipped over his handlebars, hitting himself on the head on the concrete and died instantly. To which doctors said, had he had a helmet on, he would have lived. Petting a cobra. Petting a cobra, what, I have to really read that one. <laughs> Petting a cobra. I'm just, in 1997, uh, again, a man not, not in India, but in Pennsylvania, who happened to own a cobra, he stuck his hand in the snake's tank and the snake objected. And he was bitten and died while trying to pet his pet cobra. Good grief. Another one I don't think I have to read jet skiing over Niagara Falls. Oh my gosh. <laughs> 1995. Uh, they wanted to raise awareness about the homeless. And to do so, he equipped a jet ski with an improvised rocket booster and, try, and tried to shoot over Niagara Falls, and he didn't make it. <laughs> and and improvised bungee jumping. Uh -oh. In 1997, uh, a young man decided to make his own bungee cords together with tape and tied one end around his leg and the other around the top of a railroad bridge and no one saw what happened next, but we, didn't, we know what did. He was discovered the next morning with a broken neck. So always remember, you're going to bungee jump. Your bungee cord has to be shorter than your destination. Just saying. And not break. Switching seats, belts, switching seats while driving. Don't think I have to read that one, right? I think Paul and Mary's probably done that a few times. <laughs> Just saying. Oh, I don't know this one. A deadly alarm clock. In 1886, alarm clocks, as we know them, didn't exist. So Samuel Wardell, a lamplighter in New York who needed to get us work before dawn, invented his own method. He wired a clock to a shelf near his bed, which had a heavy weight on it. At the right time, the shelf would fall, and the weight would loudly hit the floor, waking him up. Sadly, as with so many inventors, Wardell's own creation led to his doom. One Christmas night, after showing off the alarm clock to admiring guests, Wardell put everything back in place, but he was a bit tipsy and must have been a little off his, with his measurements. The next morning, the weight had fell down right on his head. Oh. <clears throat> in need of a restroom, inside, uh, aside from a scientific accomplishment, da the Danish astronomer uh, Bara is a probably best known for two things, his metal nose and his peculiar death. Uh, he had lost most of his real nose in a duel shot off, so he strapped a metal one on to keep it from looking like it had been shot off. I don't know who wrote this, but that's pretty funny within <laughs> itself right there. As for death, it occurred soon after at a royal banquet in 1601. During a meal, Braha realized that he needed to go to the bathroom, but he didn't want to offend his host. It was com considered implied to leave the table before royalty. So Bra. Uh, Bra held it for hours and in until he finally was able to leave, but then he found he could not go at all. After several painful days, he died of a burst bladder. Oh my gosh. Maybe I should have read that one before I shared it with you. I don't know. <laughs> and finally, a frozen, uh, frozen along with the chicken, and I'll share this one with you. This is one of the famous scientists, Sir Francis Bacon, and we're talking chicken, but this is Sir Francis Bacon, was a British lawyer, a philosopher, and a writer who helped found the scientific method. On his way to a friend's house in 1626, Bacon was seized with an ideal. He had been studying the effects of cold weather on meat, and there, and there happened to be snow on the ground. He stopped his carriage, got out, bought a chicken, and began stuffing snow into it. 
Bacon was so engrossed with his experiment that by the time he realized he was cold, it was too late. He got to his friend's house and died from pneumonia. I didn't say these were the top ten dumbest ones. I, I bet there's others, right? I mean, when we think about the, the, the top drowning, being shot uh, in our world today, uh, playing around with electricity, that's shocking for most people. Uh, being buried alive by landslide, rubble, earthquake, being suffocated, fire, being stabbed, falling to your death, being bitten by a venomous snake or animal, as we just as we just read about. <coughs> Cancer, no doubt, top of the list. Being mauled to death by an animal. That's helping more and more in America here lately for some reason as we crowd in. Uh, being rolled over by a dislodged boulder rumbling over you. I thought that was an interesting one. Or like a few, a few years ago, a guy here at the church, a tree limb fell on his truck. And I thought, you know, your odds have to be pretty bad. He was driving, too. He was driving, too. And I, you know, you know, I'm just saying, you might want to check yourself. Jumping into a wood chipper. Oh, Don, gosh. just words of advice. <laughs> you can throw him into a wood chipper, but, you know. He ain't letting him get one. <laughs> Grenade explosion, drug overdose, car crash, running over, being hung or hanging yourself. Heart, uh, heart, uh, heart uh, attack, frostbite. Organ failure, aircraft cat crash, ship sinking, and I guess if you have a lot of money, a rocket in space explosion. Or like, uh, was it this this year or last year, the sub that sank that in, sub. At, or okay. imploded year. really in, in three miles down, uh, mm -hmm. that's tragic. So, yeah. of course, there is one more experience at some point in life that is, is which is dying from embarrassment, right? Dying from embarrassment, which I believe <laughs> often brings more drama than it's actually worth, totally if you want to know the truth. Nevertheless, I digress. Let me bring you back to the message here tonight. As people were intrigued, uh, as people were very much intrigued with death, are we not? I mean, I'm just saying, there's a tremendous amount of books as well as TV shows related to the topic of death, even in some examples de detailing the way it happened in the most specific details. I mean, you can learn how to, 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 to take out a spouse watching television, right? I'm just saying, it's, it's there, right? To, well, more importantly, it tells you what not to do. That's the main part, right? Listen to the last part, how they got caught. <laughs> and don't do that again, right? Don't do that. See, even in some examples, uh, it's, it's really, excuse me, uh, it details out those details. It's really, to some degree, an, an infatuation with death. And uh, it really is. It is also how we often judge our success in our lives. We really do. As we often state that if we lived, if someone lives to be 92 or 98 or 100 or 101, they lived a good long life, right? I hope they did. Just as if someone passes early in their years, that's, uh, that's, that's when we say it's such a tragedy. They were so young. Because we, we look at everything by death. And I've talked about this before. When Jesus Christ looks at everything by life, right? Uh, you know, that, that's the one way to look at it. And that's why I want you to consider that there are a million different ways to live. But, in fact, there are only one true way to live. <coughs> Amen. Did I just say that backwards? Yes. I did. Mm -hmm. There are a million ways to die, but only one true way to live. It really is. And though we make searching for life seem so difficult, in some cases so mysterious, when in reality life is much easier to find uh, than anything we could ever search for. Yes. It's been right here the whole time. <coughs> Amen. It, it, see... Searching for life is not, it's not hunting for a pirate treasure. It's not hidden. It's like I shared with y'all Wednesday night about the concept of heaven and salvation. Why would Christ make something so available and then try to make heaven so complicated? Right. He wouldn't. Mm -hmm. And honestly, truth in reality, if you really read your Bible, you'll find out it's not nearly as complicated as we wish to make it. I mean, God doesn't want to hold it. He wants to give you life. So why would he make it like a, 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 tr a pirate's treasure or some kind of a scramble or something to go find it? It's right in front of you, has been the whole time. And it's almost laughable to how many books, movie blogs, and, and websites that are related to the topic of, of finding ourselves. Amen? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Searching for my true self. Searching for true life. Looking for what life really means. Matter of fact, I was thinking, they even made a movie a few years ago called Searching for Nemo, where they even had a little fish that got lost in the ocean, and the whole time he was trying to find himself, right? Find the meaning of life. When in reality, had it been a real fish, it would have been exactly where God had intended to be and been in the ocean. Amen? Because sometimes, see, we forget the fact that God put you, placed you where he wanted you to be. Yes. Amen? Amen? That's the fact of it because it would have been where God placed it. And it's a very similar story to, to a, a young woman who came home to see her parents one weekend from college uh, and announced that she was going to take a semester off to go and look for herself, to search for herself. The comment took her parents somewhat off guard as they considered the large amount of money that they had invested in this young woman's education. When in a very long pause, the mother asked 
you want to go find yourself. You want to, you're searching for yourself. To which the daughter replied, yes, I, I'm in search of myself. I need to take uh, some time off. And that's when the father, filled with joy, jumped from his chair, embraced his daughter with the biggest hug he'd ever had, and said, problem solved, I have found you. You're right here in our living room. You have been found. Now go finish your college. <laughs> See, sometimes we're searching for something that's already right there in us. Amen? <laughs> See, to be clear, to find true life is actually one of the most uncomplicated things to find as it's already within every one of us. And that's exactly what Paul shared with us in Romans chapter 10, starting in verse 1. And I know I told you to go to James 1, but if you would, would you flip over to Romans 10? Because I, I really want you to follow this. It's, it's a bit lengthy, but we've got just a few minutes. Romans chapter 10 and verse 1. Romans chapter 10, verse 1, it says, Brother, my heart desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they may be saved. For I bear them witness that they have a zeal for God, but not according to the knowledge. For they, being ignorant of God's righteousness and seeking to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted to the righteousness of God. Sound like America today? Yeah. Amen. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. For Moses writes about the righteousness, which is of the law. The man who does those things shall live by them. But the righteousness of faith speaks in this way. Do not say in your heart, well, who will ascend into heaven? That is to bring Christ down from above. Or who will ascend into the abyss? And that is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say, Paul is asking? What is the truth about salvation, about life? Paul says that the word is near you, in your mouth, and in your heart. And that is the word of faith we preach. And because it is in you, we can be saved. Look at verse 9. That if we confess with your mouth, that the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. You will have life. Amen. Now that doesn't seem very complicated, does it? Amen. Look at verse 10. For in, with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made until salvation. For the scripture says, whoever believes on him will not be put to death. And oh, by the way, for everyone claiming independence within their gender and race and the belief, Christ said there is but one way. And see, he, because he knew this. He knew what Christ knew one very distinct thing that we didn't know. Christ already knew who Lucifer was. Amen. Amen. See, he knew that independence, that spirit of what I want. And he clarifies this in verse 12. He said, here, let me get in front of you on this one. He says that there is no distinction between the Jews and the Greeks. Now, in this first century, that's the deal. In our world today, that's, there's no difference in anybody in this world. Because the first thing somebody wants to do is jump up and say, well, that's not applicable to me. Right? Because of, you know, Father God said, this simplicity of life to confess and to believe is available to anyone and everyone that will simply call upon my name, which is exactly what he says in verse 13. Because he says, for whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. See, it's not an Easter egg hunt, right? It's not. And it's always been right there. And again, uh, there, uh, again, in this concept of a million ways to die, only one way to live. And in that one way, it is simple. It's not complicated. Don't, don't go religion on it. Go Christian. Go Christian. Accept Christ. You can't earn it. You can't buy it. All you have to do is accept it by confessing Jesus is the Lord. Now listen to this part. Jesus is the Lord of my life. Right? Mm -hmm. And then living as such. Same, same conceptual text that we talked about this morning, allowing God to prune me for him. Let me, now, I say that because on, on the second half of the statement, it's critical because there are a lot of decorative Christians. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people who think they're Christians, little ornamental Christians who claim as soon as you ask them, are you a Christian, what do they say? Yes. You bet. Mm -hmm. Or I go to church or have gone to church. But there's always that agreement that they know who God is. Then that is when you need to ask them, then is the, is the Savior, is he the Lord of your life? Because the two are in one. Amen. Mm -hmm. It is that worship. It's that following that habit. Because if he is, then we are, the, then we are more than hearers of God's will. We are doers of his instructions. His, his, and that's, and that's, that's what I think the true blessing of this church is, is how many of you are true. You pray. You have a relationship with God. It, it, you, understand, you get it. 
right? You understand these things aren't happening because of us, but they're happening because of God through Amen. us. Amen. So that's the beautiful part, right? Right. right. And, and that is what James was talking about. Look again as we, as we really close this evening down already. Chapter 1 and verse 21. Therefore, lay aside the filthiness and the overflow of wickedness. What is all that? What's he telling us? Get, get rid of our natural selves. Amen. Mm -hmm. Huh? Let, and, and the natural world. Turn it off. Shut it off. And receive with meekness the humility with, with, with opinions off. And ears open the implanted word. Mm -hmm. The word which is able to save our souls. Did you, did you hear that while ago in Romans 10? That part where it said the word. Verse. Uh, let me see. Let me find it. Uh, in verse 8. Paul said the word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. See that's already there. That's already there. That's why life is not so hard. Searching for my meaning. Searching for, uh, somebody was telling me that a, a guy wrote a book the other day about this very topic and sold like 15 million copies. Go read your Bible. Yeah. And then go read the book. Yeah. But read your Bible first. That way you can understand what's discerned. You can discern what's true and not true about Amen. the book. Right? right? So many times we read the book, we forget the Bible. We think, man, that makes for a good, I like that. And that's what you call religion. Mm -hmm. Amen. The fact of the matter, go read your Bible, then read the book, then go searching for yourself. And if you're still off, then something must be missing because God said it's that simple to confess and to believe. Amen. One way to live. One way. That's what he said right here in verse 22 of our text tonight. And because of this, be doers of the word and not hearers, only deceiving yourselves. You know what this uh, sounds like in the 21st century corn fed and hand spanked, honestly? What the, that sentence really sounds like? It sounds just like this. Listen to God and do what God says. Yeah. And you know how far that gets in the world? About zero far. Mm -hmm. You know why? Because they don't want to. Before I came to Christ, it wasn't a problem. I, I questioned all those years about grace and forgiveness and how, how, how could I keep doing this and how could I keep doing that? If, you know, and, and the problem was, see, I just didn't want to come out of town. That was the fight, right? Mm -hmm. I didn't want to give God control of my life. I did not want to end up here. Not here, don't take that wrong. I did not want to end up in this position. I did not want to be this. I'd seen what my parents had been through. I did, mm -mm, trust me, I did not, mm, no, no way. But I knew and said, but then that's the question. That's the question. Listen to God and do what God says. Battle every day, is it not? Yep. Father God, what will you have me do today? Not that. Mm, not that one. <laughs> Definitely not that one. Okay, I might do that one this week, right? Do what God says. That's what James was instructing. It's real simple. That's a simple statement of what that says. But doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving ourselves. Don't lie to yourself about your relationship with God. And don't lie to yourself about your relationship to life. Listen to God and do what God says. Make, make it simple. Do you hear? It's not just that complicated. It's, it's as I said this morning. We can all make sort of excuses for our attitudes and our behaviors, choices and decisions, as God truly knows very well where they came from. As I said earlier, he knows who Lucifer was. He gets us. He understands rebellion. He understands isolation. He understands independence because he dealt with Lucifer who said what? I am greater than all. And he said, not today. See you later. And then he sent him down to us. I don't, I'm going to have to ask him about that someday. But No, I'm just kidding. But when it comes down to having life, it's a choice. And there's but one way, and that's the way is Jesus Christ. And many of you already know this tonight. I hope all of you know this tonight. Just one way. If I may leave you in closing with this thing to think on this week or maybe for a few minutes if you're negotiating your with God your lifestyle choices negotiating realize you're the only one negotiating from this morning right right I don't want to say you're the only one at the table because Christ is at the table because he's still wanting you to be saved and if you have loved ones and others friends and family and they, and they think by their lifestyle of ignoring God and living outside of God's word that they're somehow winning the negotiation Please tell them God's not negotiating. Oh, he is there at the table because he wants you to come to Christ. But, again, there is only but one way, right? And that's the sad part that the world doesn't want to hear. They don't want to hear this part, listen to God and do what God says. They say we want help for our diseases. We want help and we want relief from our financial burdens. We want health in our homes. We want happier homes. Then he says, do this, listen to God and do what I say. And we keep saying what? Boy, I sure hope we write, we get another, we get a better government this time. How sad, right? Honestly, how sad. So realize that and help others to realize that, that God has made the path clear and the choice simple. 
It's not complicated. It's a yes or no decision, not an ought to, might, or maybe. And that is why we can factually uh, know that there are no doubt, and no doubt a million ways to die, but there is only one true way to live. Amen? Amen. I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to me, to the Father, other than through me. Jesus Christ, then, now, and forever, and always. Amen, and amen, and amen. amen. It's your choice. It's your life because it's your eternity. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 God bless y'all tonight. See, y'all thought it was going to go a little longer. <laughs> Even with Paul's interruption. <laughs> thank you for coming tonight. Thank you for being here. And thank you for all you do, honestly, uh, sincerely. As I said, I said in the message, thank you for understanding and getting it. Pray and ask God, what do you want us to do next? Amen. Where are we going? How are we doing this? Still a lot of moving pieces, but I promise God is at the helm of all that. Amen. Amen. Anything in closing tonight? One thing we mentioned before, there will be a lot of us gone this third Tuesday coming up in September. Did we do it the first week? Do what the first week? Man camp. 